Let's take a look at the next procedure of doing hypothesis testing using p-value approach for the case of dependent samples. So these are the procedure that you can follow uh, in order to find the p-value using Microsoft Excel. So in your data analysis, you would choose the option for t-test paired two sample for means. And um, this is how it's going to look like. All right. So only choose this option only and only if your hypothesis testing is involving dependent samples. Okay, so we're going to um, apply this procedure for our example 3.13. This example is about um, a, a new gadget that needs to be installed to the air conditioner in order to minimize the number of bacteria floating the air. So then this is the data collected. Uh, the question here is, is it wise for the factory management to install the new gadget? So we need to do a hypothesis testing to make a decision here whether or not to install the new gadget. All right. Um, and then test the hypothesis at 5% level of significance. So here we have that our alpha is equal to 0 0.05. Okay. And then they want you to solve this using p-value approach. So you need to use your Microsoft Excel. But before we go to the Excel, let's try to understand our claim. What is our claim here? So we need to make sure, um, we need to decide on whether or not we want to install the new gadget. So let's say we make it that our claim is to install the new gadget. Okay, so but what is the um, prerequisites for us to install the new gadget? Well, we will install the new gadget if it does work to minimize the number of bacteria. So what does it mean that um, the new gadget does minimize the number of bacteria. So you have to think about this logically. You have to think about this logically without even looking at the data given to you, okay? Don't look at the data, just think about this logically. So if the new gadget does minimize the number of bacteria, so it means that the number of bacteria um, after the installation should be less, fewer, compared to the number of bacteria after, uh, before installation, right? Or maybe I can also write it in vice versa. So before should be greater than after, okay? So in other words, I, I, I can also write this as um, mu B minus mu A greater than zero. So this gives me mu D greater than zero, okay? So this is if you choose to find the differences by doing before minus after, you get mu D greater than zero. And please do remember that since this is dependent samples, you do need to change your notation from uh, mu b mu a to mu d because this is dependent samples. Okay, so here we have our um, claim and this should go to h1. Okay, so mu d greater than zero, this is our claim. And remember to also write down the, the other hypothesis statement, which is the complete opposite. Okay, so we are done with step one, then we are ready to proceed with the Microsoft Excel. And now only you need to look at your data. Okay, so because you're going to use this data to, um, to come up with the output. All right, so using your Microsoft Excel, you will use the procedure I showed you in my previous slide. And this is the result that you're going to get. Okay, um, let me zoom this in for you. T-test paired two sample for means. So if you, whenever you see this in the output, it shows that uh, this is the hypothesis testing for dependent samples. Okay, so again, I would like to remind you, dependent samples, you need to use the notation mu d. Alright, so in this um, hypothesis testing, uh, we consider the cases where the differences is by taking before minus after. That's why you can see that in the output, uh, data for before comes Bef uh, and then <laughs> comes first and then only you can see the, uh, the information for uh, data for after installation. So let's take a look at this um, output here. Uh, so similar to the independent samples, you can uh, get the sample size here. So from here, we can see that the sample size for before data is 7 and so is the sample size for after data. And then the hypothesized mean difference is 0 because that is what you need to set when you were doing the when you were um, doing it in your Microsoft Excel, this is set by you, and you can also set the significance level used. Okay, and then you have your uh, test statistic value here for alpha 0 0.05, and also the p value for one tail and p value for two tail. Okay, so you need to choose 
um, between these two p-value. If you want to solve using p-value approach, then you need to choose between these two. So how to make the decision uh, on which value to use? You would have to look at your uh, step number one. And this is, well, if you look at the expression here, this is showing us that this is a one-tail test. It's a right-tail test, right? So it's a one-tail test. So we're going to use the P1 tail, all right? So uh, I'm going to take 0 0.015015 uh, here. If we round it up to four decimal places, it's going to be 0 .1, 0 0.0150. Yes, so that is our p-value that we consider for this hypothesis testing. And you compare it against the uh, significance level here, and it appears to be smaller than um, that's why we reject H now. All right, reject H now. So let's take a look. If you reject H now, means oh, the, I I I've just realized there's a mistake here on the slide. This should be H1. Okay, everyone, this should be H1. Perhaps you do need to make this correction on your module as well. Okay, so come again to step number uh, the the decision step here. Reject H now. So I'm going to reject H now. So that means we're going to accept H1. And at the same time, by accepting H1, we are also accepting or supporting our claim, which is to install the new gadget. Right, so the conclusion here is at 5% level of significance, there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that it is wise for the factory management to install the new gadget. Okay, so what you need to know here is that to be able to read the output carefully, and to decide which p-value to choose from depends on your step number one. Okay, hmm, I think that is mm, very clear. So let's move on to the next hypothesis testing procedure for the case of ratio of variances, right? So this is the final procedure in this video. Um, there are fewer steps, so you can go through this on your own later. We will use this to solve example 3.14. But I do need to tell you this. Um, this procedure is uh, used for ratio of variances only for the case of one-tailed test only. Alright, I repeat myself. This is the procedure uh, to do hypothesis testing for ratio of variances only for one tailed test. Um, if you need to do hypothesis testing using Excel for the ratio of variances for two tailed test, uh, you can use the procedure which I sh uh, showed to you in my previous video in example 3.12. Okay, so that is for two tailed test ratio variances. And here in this video, I'm gonna show you how to perform uh, hypothesis testing using Microsoft Excel for ratio variances for one tailed test. So I'm, we're gonna look at example 3.14. Okay, sorry. So this is quite um, elaborate. So let's simplify it. This is just about um, between two assembly line. And it says that the arrangement with the assembly line with the smaller variance will be adopted. Okay, so that's the, the, the key word here. Uh, instruction, do the data support the claim that assembly line one will be adopted? So that will be our uh, claim here and solve this using Microsoft Excel and p-value approach. Okay, so let's construct our claim. Let's try to understand our claim here. Again, when you want to understand your claim, do not look at the data given to you. Okay, so just imagine that you don't have it. So what will be our claim? So the claim here that assembly line will be adopted. Okay, so let's write it down. Uh, claim line 1 will be adopted. So, but what is the um, prerequisite if you want to adopt assembly line 1? We will do that only and only if that assembly line has smaller variance. Okay, so if it has smaller variance. So, based on this claim, we will um, change this sentence into statistical notations, right? So, 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 since this is talking about variance, so of course, obviously, we will be using sigma squared. So if sigma uh, line 1 is supposed to be smaller, so we have that sigma square 1 should be smaller than sigma square 2. And there you go, we have our uh, claim for this example. So this uh, expression will go to H1, sigma square 1 smaller than sigma square 2, this is our claim. Right? And this is a one-tail test. So that's why we can use 
uh, the procedure to uh, conduct this hypothesis testing using Microsoft Excel. Alright, so step one is done. So then we're going to go and find the p-value using Microsoft Excel. So you will go through the procedure I showed to you from my previous slide. And this is um, the output that you're going to get. Okay, so let's take a look at the output. F-test 2 sample for variances. So this um, title here tells you that this output is for the ratio of variances for the case of one tail test. And you only have one p-value given to you which is the p-value for one tail test. Okay, so you should never go wrong here. You should only pick this number if you want to use for p-value. So this is 0 0.0152. So we compare it against the significance level here, 0 0.01. Uh, was it given? I think, yes, it was given in the example, but I did not highlight it um, previously, so sorry. And this p-value is greater than the significance level. So decision? do not reject hash now, right? So do not reject hash now, and you will come up with the conclusion that at 1% one, at 1 significance level, there is insufficient evidence to support the claim. Therefore, the assembly line 1 cannot be adopted. So this is how uh, the output for ratio variances would look like if you use Microsoft Excel to find your p-value. Okay, so this is the last procedure that I need to share with you in this video. And I'm going to end my video here with this um, simple summary of the three different approach that you can use to conduct a statistical hypothesis testing. In practical, you can choose any of the methods that you prefer, but in answering the, um, the exam questions, the quiz questions, you need to read the question carefully and find out which method uh, would you need to use to answer that particular question. Alright, so stay tuned for the next video where Dr. Siti Rosina will share with you about type 1 and type 2 error. And that will be the last video for chapter 3. So have a great day. Bye-bye everyone. Assalamualaikum.